to one hit wonders of the outdoor national series. You know, I'm just talking 450s and 252 strokes, like Trey Kennard, for example. I didn't know he only won one race. It was Utah, 2014. I'm not counting his 250 national championship, but he only won one national. Go figure, guys. Now, on to Brett Metcalf. Now, Brett Metcalf, that's a surprising one in the sense that I, I forgot he won. He won Southwick. Let's not forget, he was a guy that was battling Dungey for the title one year. Uh, it was Southwick 2011. Um, and I believe there was one where he almost won where he ran out of gas, but then he got it the next year. So, yeah. And then there was the crazy year of 2009 that Tommy Hahn and a couple other guys got wins. But it, it, was, it was surprising. Um, I forget, almost all the heavy hitters were hurt. But, not to take away, dude, hey, he's in the record books. He won a 450 National. So, it was Steel City in 2009. Matt Gerke, part of that same crazy 2009, he won Southwick. Uh, it was a little bit muddy, but he still had to beat, actually, like I think it was like a 45-year-old junkyard dog, John Dowd, who he was battling with. Still, hey, record books, scoreboard for the Canadian uh, multi-time national champion. Josh Grant got his only outdoor win uh, and also in that same crazy 2009, uh, he won Red Bud. So, Josh Grant, I, I would have thought maybe he won Glen Helen, but he never did. Uh, he got motos, but he never actually got the overall win. Jeffrey Hurling's probably, you know, the only guy I've ever really called the fastest man on, planet, on the planet other than James Stewart. He's only won one national, but let's be honest, he's only entered one national. If he raced more, I am almost positive he wouldn't be on the one hit wonder list. He's anything but a one-hit wonder. Um, then we go to Ivan Hot Sauce Tedesco. Here's another one of your former, uh, you know, 250 or 125 champions who moved up to the big bikes and only got one win. It was that crazy 2009 series. He won. Uh, let's see, which he won Thunder Valley in 09. Then there's Jimmy Button. Jimmy Button was pioneering the four-stroke and just started really doing good. He won Washougal in 2000, or I'm sorry, 1999. Unfortunately, he was hurt right after that in 2000, so we never really got to see Jimmy come into his prime. Michael Pichon, the angry Frenchman. He looked almost for sure to win more than just one. He won Glen Helen in 1998, but unfortunately, he got into it with the EMTs and, and Honda had fired him, sent him back to Europe. And with all the drama, he ended up living back in Europe and he got a couple a couple of world championships after that. So, I mean, it wasn't all bad, but yeah, the great Mikel Pashan only got one win in Glen Ellen in 1998. Jeff Chicken Matasevich was known as pretty much a Supercross specialist, but let's not forget, he won Kenworthy in 1991, shocker. Uh, I forgot about that one. It was a 250 National back when they split the 250s and 500s as half the series. I believe it might have been the series finale. But either way, Chicken got her done. And the only reason this is surprising that Chicken got it done was his lifestyle. He wasn't exactly known as a, as a hard trainer. Alan King. I remember this name. I remember he was almost like a perennial privateer. I don't know too much about it. He won Hangtown in 1984. So I believe he, I believe he was a local guy up there, one of the NorCal guys, and they were just so fast at Hangtown. Billy Lyles. This dude was pretty much a European racer most of his career. Uh, he did win Lake Whitney. I didn't even know Lake Whitney had a national in 1983. So good on, good on Billy Lyles for getting it in 1983 before he went off to Europe and almost got some world championships. Kyle Keelan, he's part of a, a dynasty because his kid, um, Kenny Keer, got, uh, he's got a son that raced and he did pretty good. I did not know he actually won a national back in Florida. And the guys he beat, oh my God, he beat almost every big dog. He beat Glover, Bailey, Johnson. And then we move on to Steve Wise. I would have thought Steve might, might have won more than one, but he was really famous for when they did the Super Bikers, which was the original Supermoto, for whatever reason, that just suited Steve Wise, and he kicked ass, and he did so well. He actually went on to a you know, somewhat successful road racing career after that. Kenny Zart, 
So I remember this guy from Glen Helen, or like Glen, the, the old Golden States. I knew him as a vet rider. I had no idea what a badass. My dad told me he was a badass, but I never got to see any of this. I didn't know he actually won a national, but I remember him in the plus 30, plus 40 class, hair hanging out, just sending it. And of course, look at those pictures. Look at him sending that old like Jesus. What a, what a crazy guy. Billy Grossi. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't know too much about Billy Grossi. Looks like your classic 70s Spicoli. I mean, he had style, I'll give him that. I mean, he was probably what Jason Anderson is today. He even wrote a Husky, check that out. Uh, that old school Honda. God, those guys sending those bikes that would literally break in half. I don't know too much about Rick Thorwalds. I know that he went on to do some off-road stuff, but he won Pocono of all races. I, once again, 1973, long before my time, but he's one of your one-hit wonders. Is, Tim Hart, man, this is the theme of these guys in the late 70s, just the, the wild hair, probably, you know, like the smell of reefer coming out of their vans, and they just raced their bikes and had fun, but Tim Hart got a win. I think he won multiple 125 nationals, but he only got one of the 250 nationals. And his style, once again. John DeSoto, the flying Hawaiian. He won at a place called Delta Motorsports Park in 1973. And he, you know, I guess he got some championships. And I mean, look at that dude. He, he was he was your first first guy that looked buff. I mean, this dude was thick. Uh, you know, I guarantee you the dudes did not look. He makes that thing look like a, like a, like a pit bike. So After John, we went to Jim Pomeroy. Jim Pomeroy was part of the, the Honda teams that first became really big. And he won Saddleback, that nasty track, in 1972. Look how tall. I don't know if these guys are really tall or those bikes were just that small. Those are the, that's the size of a modern day 85. Yeah. Now we go to the guys, active racers, Cooper Webb. He's only won one race. It was Millville in 2019. I was surprised. Will he get off that list? I don't know. Probably by the time you're watching this video, he's probably got another win. But right now, he sits as a one hit wonder at one national win. He, well, he did catch and pass Eli, so that's pretty impressive. Justin Bogle, he had that impressive season in 2017 where he won, just came out of nowhere and won a moto at Thunder Valley. And we're like, well, yeah, that's cool. It was just a one deal. He'll never do it again. Well, he did it again that same year in Bud's Creek. He went and won. I think he went 3-1 for the overall or 1-3, something like that, but he got the overall win, and we were just blown away. Chase Sexton, it's not, yeah, he shouldn't even be on this list, and he'll pro he's probably, by the time you're watching this, he's probably off the list, he probably won Paula to open the 21 season, but he did win Paula last year in 20, that was his one win, so fortunately, he's still on the list, but don't expect him to stay here very long, and like I said, by the time you're watching this, we're probably laughing, because he got four or five wins, and maybe even the 2021 champion, so, Anyway, guys, hey, thanks for watching this. I'll do some other lists, but subscribe, and, uh, and I'll keep making more.